guys and welcome back to my channel i'm hoping i can film this video but the sun keeps poking out from behind the clouds and i don't know if you're about to see me very well but we'll see how we get on um so today i'm going to be doing my part two tips and tricks for camp america video um my first one got such a good response and a lot of people then asked me more questions in like the comment section and stuff so i thought i was always going to do a part two anyway but i thought i'll get straight into it now because it does seem like a lot of people are starting to apply and get everything sorted now anyway so i thought that would be good to get ahead of the game um i have again asked in my camp group chat if any of my like co-counselors people i went to camp with have got any of their own tips because i didn't want to end up like repeating things that i'd said before so i know it'd be good to ask other people because they could have completely completely different tips to me so i've got them on my phone again oh the sun is coming out normally i would never complain about the sun coming out <sighs> right great i mean golden hour right but you just can't see me very well and normally i would film in the other bedroom but harry's asleep so this is what i'm working with when the sun goes in i am literally heading out as well in like half an hour ish so i was hoping to get this film beforehand i mean i could put the curtain there but then oh that's not too bad but then it's a little bit annoying you can see like <laughs> the curtain waving oh come on sunshine right so i've managed to move locations i'm actually just in, on the edge of harry's mom's bed so i hope she doesn't mind that i'm using the bedroom to film a video um so yeah i'll get straight into it like i said have some different tips um a lot of these are kind of like good ideas of things to bring um i am i think i mentioned in my last video i am going to do like a um pack with me like plan and then closer to count when i'm actually packing i will do like a physical like pack with me where i actually show you what i'm taking with me um but yeah a lot of these tips are really good things of little ideas of small things to take with you that you probably wouldn't realize me and my dad did actually come up with another video idea which is going to be similar to that like a like i don't think people realize how much random stuff you need well you don't need but that ends up working well for you to have at camp so i was gonna do one video that was just gonna be like random things to take to camp video so like things you wouldn't really think of um i've got loads of plans for some ideas of videos so i want to get all of those filmed so i need to stop rambling because i do that thing again where then i get too out of breath and i can't breathe so my first tip this touches on slightly what i spoke about in my last video um and it's when it gets close to camp start posting in your group chats to try and find like a travel buddy um and i mentioned obviously trying to put as many messages in the group chats reach out to as many people like you never know you could end up not finding out you're going to camp with someone that went to your school or lives around the corner or is from the same area as you like it's actually such a small world um that you will come across people that live really close so being able to reach out a little bit close to the time you could end up flying or traveling out with someone um i remember i think it was for last year um this goes for like american staff international staff everyone as well because obviously our camp, my camp's on the east coast, so like some people were travelling like from the west coast, from the middle of the country, um, and some people were putting in like, oh, I'm going to drive up on this state. Is anyone like in this area, or I'm going to drive through this state or whatever? Um, and she picked a few people up. This girl who put this, and it obviously meant that she didn't have to do that drive, that journey all on her own. She had someone to do it with. So it is really nice to have someone that you can travel with. Um, makes the whole process so much nicer like i said my second summer i flew out with my mom my dad my brother and my friend um and that was just a nice little trip and we had a little like holiday thing before we did i think we had two nights um in a hotel just outside of newark so yeah same thing try and just get involved um speak to as many people as you can because like you say it'll be so much easier when you've got someone that you can travel with or even just talk to about like what your travel plans are like just it'll take the pressure off it all next tip is during the first week of camp like, try and get to know your co-counselors as much as possible because they'll end up being such a massive support system within like for your summer um so i don't know if i've really explained this I, and i'm pretty sure this is the same at most camps i don't know how it works but my camp there's i think there's eight different divisions like different age groups of kids that come to camp um, so it starts off with freshmen and freshmen at my camp is split into freshman A and freshman B just because we have so many kids come in. Um, and I think they're between like seven, seven, eight and nine maybe. 
Um, so there's normally like within the whole freshman division, there's probably a good like 50 campers, I think. Like there's a lot. Um, so yeah, you've got freshmen, then they're cadets, sophomores, juniors, seniors, supers, teens and CITs. And that will probably sound like a different language if you're just thinking of going to camp. But that's how I think most camps spread like their groups out. Um, so you'll be with like a certain division. So like I've mentioned my first summer, I was with freshmen, freshman A, then I did freshman B summer. Then we missed our cadet summer because of COVID. And then my girls were sophomores last year. I obviously couldn't get over there. Um, and they'll be juniors next year, which is crazy to think I started with them when they were little babies, little seven year olds. Um, so yeah, that'll be really, really nice to see them all again. But yeah, so co-counselors within your division, um, it really varies depending on what age group of kids you have. Um, like my second summer, there was, I think seven counselors in our bunk between 10 kids. And the year before there was just four of us. Um, I think there was a lot more staff my second summer. Um, and because obviously freshman is quite a big division, there was quite a lot more counselors allocated to that age group anyway. Um, but as you obviously get older into the, the, the upper divisions, um, there's not normally as many counsellors as that because obviously you don't need as many people to look after those kids because they're all older, they know what they're doing. Um, so yeah, mostly if you're with the younger ones, you will have more co-counsellors with you. Sometimes it really depends. Like if they're low on staff that summer, it will be spread out a lot more evenly. Um, so it really depends because like I say, I went from four counsellors to then having seven counsellors in my bunk my second summer. Um, it was so nice having so many people in our bunk though. There was like, well, 10 kids and seven counsellors, so 17 of us. Um, so yeah, it was really nice, but yeah, get to know your co-counsellors because like you say, they're the people you spend your whole summer with, um, whether they're like normally split between like general counsellors and specialist counsellors, you'll normally have an even mix of both. So you won't end up being in a bunk with just like specialist counsellors because obviously there needs to be someone to stay with the kids all day. Um, so yeah, trying to reach out. I don't, obviously you don't really get grouped into your divisions until like you get to camp. Um, you can obviously put on your application the age group of kids that you've got experience working with and you'll talk about that on like your interview and stuff. So your camp directors will have an idea of what group, like what age group you'll be best suited to. Um, but you won't actually find out unless you're going for a specific role, like you know you're going to be like some sort of head staff for like the older girls. Like unless that's the case, you won't find out what division you'll be in until you get to camp. Um, it's normally within like the first three or four days they'll sit you down have a chat ask you like what your experience is with what age group of kids if you've got like a preference that you want to work with a certain age um and then they'll go from there and now sometimes you can go in and say oh i really want to work with the younger ones but you could be given off like a vibe that you'd work really well and you get get along really well with older girls um or older boys um so it really really can vary but they won't rule it out like if you say oh no i really really want to have the younger ones they will listen to that and take that into account. Um, I feel like I've completely gone off the point there. But yeah, co-counsellors. I love my co-counsellors. I don't even know how many of my co-counsellors are going back next summer. I hope they all are. But yeah, you will realise like that is your division. That is the group of people you spend nearly all of your summer with. Um, so yeah, really get to know them. Try and get on with them. Um, yeah. So these next few tips are, like I said, they're more like ideas of things to take with you. Um, first one is take a pair of flip flops. I don't think I took a pair of flip flops to camp my first summer. I think I just had a pair of slides. Um, and obviously like when you're walking just to and from certain places like at dinner or like even activities and things, you just want to have something you can slide on your feet and you don't have to like fuss around with trainers and stuff. Obviously during the day, depending on what activity you're doing or you're working on, your footwear will will vary. Um, for me, like working at gymnastics, it was fine for me to just throw a pair of sliders on or flip flops because I'd walk down to gymnastics and then take my shoes off anyway. Um, obviously like walking over all the equipment, we didn't have shoes on. Um, but if you worked obviously at outdoor adventure, you had to have like proper footwear on that was safe. Um, so yeah, but flip flops is a must because when you just walk in to like the dining hall and stuff, you just want to be able to <laughs> throw something on. Um, and like I say, not be faffing around with sh with trainers and proper shoes. Um, so this one, take a pack of hair ties. And this for me goes side by side with socks. Socks and hair bubbles always go missing at camp. And I know hair bubbles tend to go missing anyway. Um, but yeah, take as many pairs of socks and as many hair bubbles as you can. 
because obviously when it gets hot and either you're doing some sort of activity you just want to get your hair up and out your face so yeah hair ties is a great tip um this one's a really nice one actually this one's to take a disposable camera um i love disposable cameras i love the way that the photos turn out um so i think i took a disposable camera both summers and i love the idea that you use the camera throughout like the whole time you're at camp and then you get the photos developed and you look back on it all and there could be over like six or seven weeks so you forget the photos you take um and i do really like that i'll try and insert actually some of my disposable camera photos from my summer um because they're really really nice actually so yeah i'll try and put those in but yeah that's a nice idea i think when i was at camp i literally took a disposable camera a normal like digital camera and my polaroid camera because obviously my second summer we couldn't have our phones so for certain things when you want to have photos when you're all dressed up or like you go into like a big event thing you want to be able to take photos with like your, your counsellors and your kids um so i took a digital camera with me um so I could just take all my photos on that. I did end up leaving my charger at camp and all my stuff is still there. So I'll find the charger, but I don't even think I've got the camera anymore. Anyway, um, yeah, so take some camera kind of thing with you. Um, I'm, like I say, I'm massive on photos. So I love being able to look back on all the different photos. And obviously there's a lot of photographers that will work at camp. I know at my camp anyway. Um, so they'll spend like their days walking around and taking photos of the kids like you with the kids like them doing different things so you will be able to access some photos but it is nice to be able to take your own obviously some camps will allow phones i know our camp the first summer like we took loads of photos on our phones um, and it was the second summer that we weren't allowed our phones out as much um so yeah if you want to be able to take lots of photos do that but yeah polaroid cameras are really really nice as well nearly all of my kids had polaroid cameras um and they're just so nice when you're just sitting in the bunk or getting ready and just take some take some nice photos and they obviously print out straight away um so yeah that's a really nice idea so this next one i didn't even know what this was until literally like a few weeks into camp um and it's to take a good like have a good egg crate at camp um i'll insert a photo of what this is because like i say i had no idea what it was and it's kind of like something that goes over your mattress. So you go over or under. I think it goes over your mattress. Um, and it's like a foam material and it's got like little bumps in it. That's the best way I can describe it. But I will put a photo in so you know a little bit better what I mean. Um, and this will really depend on whether, like for me, I can sleep anywhere. Like I could sleep sitting up, but it doesn't bother me where, where I sleep. So I didn't spend too much money on like bedding or pillows or things like that because I was sleeping well anyway. Um, I know a lot of people, if you do struggle to get comfy and sleep, you do want to spend a little bit of money when you go to Walmart and Target and buy some things to make yourself feel comfortable as well, make yourself feel a bit more at home. Um, but yeah, I didn't have an egg crate for, I think, virtually most of, most. I think I don't think I had one at all throughout the summer. And then because I stay for post-camp, which is like the two weeks after camp where other kids come in and use all the facilities, um, everyone was obviously leaving. They're like, oh, do you want this? Like, I was going to throw it away. Like, and I had the best bed by the end of camp because I'd literally been <laughs> gifted so many nice pillows, like blankets, um, mattress toppers, like things like that. And to be fair, it was a lot more comfy. So I would definitely, definitely get one next year. Um, but like I say, it really depends. If you don't want to spend the money because you're, you're quite comfortable sleeping wherever, I wish I had spent a little bit more on making myself feel a bit more at home um because like i said by the end of summer i had the nicest setup and it felt really cozy and i loved getting into bed at the end of the long day so it is nice to have that kind of thing but like i say you're there for a long time so two months you want to make yourself feel at home um be nice and comfortable so yeah we'll post a photo of what an egg crate looks like so you, you know a little bit better what i mean <laughs> yeah so my next tip is take old clothes to get ruined and also make sure you do have some nice clothes did talk about this in my last video um before i went to camp i did not realize that we would go out and need nice clothes as much as we did um like the amount of times you just go either to the cinema or out for food um out for drinks like, and you want to be able to have nice clothes with you if you've spent all day working in like sporty like comfy clothes you want to have something nice to get changed into so you do actually feel like you've stopped working um so yeah make sure you do have some nice clothes like i say when i do my packing video i'll touch more on like what kind of things i took um and what things i know like i would wear obviously it'll vary for everyone but i took so many things that i was like oh, i did not need to bring that at all um 
but yeah make sure you take old clothes as well because like things will get ruined and you'll be doing activities where you'll get dirty things might get ripped so don't take really expensive clothes like if you've got a really nice expensive jumper like you don't need to take it um because like i say things will get ruined things do get misplaced very easily things get mixed up um things get lost so certain things obviously you'll know what kind of thing you want to risk taking um i really don't take really really nice expensive clothes to camp because you don't know what's going to end up happening to them um but yeah obviously again every camp will be different but we do loads of like um different like kind of like events we had like color runs like mud runs so you need clothes to be able to get ruined um, my first summer i didn't take a pair of trainers that i was okay with like getting wrecked so my second summer i remember literally going to primark and buying like two pairs of really cheap like six pound trainers that i didn't mind if they were like completely battered um so yeah make sure you've got some things that you don't mind getting ruined and go with the idea of some things you will leave behind um my second summer i actually took so many things with the intention of never bringing them back um like even like little colored tops and like t-shirts and little vests and stuff that you can get for like one or two pound again from primark um and like you need like your colorful things anyway but it's good to obviously have things that haven't cost you a lot of money you don't mind ending up throwing away or if they end up getting ruined it's not going to be too upsetting um but yeah like i said my f one of my favorite pairs of trainers i had to wear for the mud run because I hadn't bought sensible trainers that I didn't mind getting ruined. Ended up having to leave them there because they were absolutely trashed. So yeah, bear in mind that you do need some old clothes, but do remember to take some nice clothes as well. The next one kind of leads on to what I've just said is like take fancy dress clothes. And um, if you've got a fancy dress box in the loft, like I have, have a little rummage through, like little kind of like accessory things. Um, don't take loads because like I say, you won't have the space in your luggage to take it all um, and your campers and other counsellors come with so much of all that stuff anyway um, like things like face paint glitter um, again I'll do a separate video about this I'm gonna try and have a brainstorm and think about all the random things that I would take um, but like colourful knee-high socks and like different like jerseys and stuff um, because especially at my camp we have like loads of themed nights especially for when we have our staff meeting um, so every Saturday we'll have a staff meeting and every Saturday there'll be a different theme. So say it's like pyjamas or like white outs, you have to wear like a whole white outfit. Um, Hawaiian, like beach themed, um, animal themed. What else do we do? Like I say, just make sure you're prepared. Like pyjamas is one of the best theme ever because you get to stay comfy. Um, but yeah, I love dressing up. It's so much fun. But like I say, don't take loads with you because other people will have things and you do end up trading things and someone will be like oh can I borrow that um but yeah jerseys like I think I mentioned literally just said jerseys but that's a theme that normally like we do quite a lot um so yeah but just having like little items that are good things to, like throw on like the kids will come like with <laughs> my girls anyway they have like this box of literally like kind of like fancy dress like dress up stuff um so it'll be kind of like fishnet tights and fish night fish night fishnet tights and fishnet gloves um face paints like hair chalk um colorful socks colorful like t-shirts tutus um so any little things that like don't go crazy and pack like three onesies because they're like different themed um you won't need it but yeah make sure you do have some fancy dress kind of clothes because it was the worst thing when everyone's dressing up and say it's like the first couple of days and everyone's dressing up and you hadn't got any dressing up stuff you feel like you don't know people well enough yet to go and ask them um and then you don't want to be the only one that can't get involved and can't get dressed up so just take a few little items um so that you're prepared next tip is look forward to days off um days off will literally make your summer as well as obviously normal days at camp but days off is literally a time when you get to relax you get to really really connect with all of your counsellors that you're out with um and do some really really fun things so like some of our days off like we went into new york for some days um some girls i know went to philadelphia i think they did that on a day off i'm sure they did um like there's theme parks like there's a six flags that's relatively close that you, people go out to um like things a little bit more local like we went to a place called white lake where you can just hire like a load of boats um and just go out on the water in the sun all day um so yeah there's some really really good things that you can do on your days off um and i don't know if i mentioned oh no this is what 
I'm going to mention in my next video because I've got a plan for my next video. Um, but yeah, so days off is normally split over three different days, um, at my camp anyway, a Tuesday, a Wednesday and a Thursday. Um, and all specialist counsellors will be off on a Wednesday and all the general counsellors will have their days off split between a Tuesday and a Thursday. Um, so yeah, your days off, you will find that obviously you'll be off with people that you're grouped with as well so like everyone that worked at gymnastics had the same day off as me everyone that worked as a lifeguard had the same day off as well um so yeah but no days off are so so fun and you find they come around so quick like for me obviously our night off started on a tuesday night into the wednesday so we'd be planning what we were doing and then before you know it we'd be planning for the next one um and you only have like six or seven full days off for the summer so it goes so quick um but yeah, days off, you will need them. And obviously it's nice to have that time to relax, unwind. Um, but yeah, when you look back on your summer, your days off is what will make that experience so amazing. So yeah, make the most of it, get yourself involved, ask someone like if you're at camp, like, oh, what should we do on our day off? Like, should we do something together? Put yourself out there, make plans yourself, ask people if they wanna make plans with you. Um, yeah. So my next tip is make the most of the facilities your camp has to offer. I think I touched on this in my last video, like kind of saying, take advantage of everything camp throws at you. Um, and like, honestly, I don't know if I've left a link for my camp in my previous videos, but I will on this one. My camp is absolutely incredible. Like one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Um, it's massive. It's like surrounded by like two lakes either side. Um, and we've got like, obviously like a fully set up, like swimming pool, basketball courts, tennis courts, um, my gymnastics pavilion, um, all like the outdoor adventure. So like the place is amazing. Um, and obviously what's quite nice, if you're a general counsellor, you obviously get to experience all of that with your campers anyway. Um, and as a specialist, obviously, depending on what kind of area you work in, you will be able to have like some periods off. Like for me down at gymnastics, there was three of us that were working at gymnastics my last summer. And sometimes you'd only have four or five kids come down. So you didn't need all three of you to obviously be down there when you only had a few kids. So we came up with like a timetable and we'd like wrote with people on and off. So like they could, whoever was off could go and spend time with their kids, like do whatever activity they were doing. Um, and that's when like, that's when you can really take advantage. I always used to kind of like plan mine so that when my kids were either doing outdoor adventure or swimming or arts and crafts, so I could then go and do that with them as well. Um, but yeah, really take advantage of what your camp has to offer. Because like I say, summer will go so, so fast. Um, and literally it'll be gone before you know it. So take advantage of everything, everything you can. So my next tip, this is the last tip I've got written down. So I may finish this video after this one. Or if I can think of some more, I'll come back and film a little bit more. Um, but anyway, this one is make camp fun for your kids. Um... Obviously, you've got to make things safe. You've got to make things enjoyable, fun anyway. But they're there for a long time, like seven, eight weeks for for young kids, especially when I had that seven-year-old starting. It's a long time and it's hard, um, especially for the little ones when they started getting homesick. Um, you need to be able to take their mind off things, be able to like plan some games, like do things, like do some fun things with them. Um, and as well, like my first summer when I was working at gymnastics, I I really like try to like get kids down and to learn gymnastics and by the second summer I kind of realized that not every kid wants to come down and learn how to do a cartwheel or learn how to do a forward roll so kind of like gauging how your kids feel like how your campers are feeling in like certain activities like this is their summer they pay to be there for the summer so making things fun so like by the time my second summer came around and I'd have like the older girls come down and um they didn't obviously want to be doing loads of structure. They didn't want to be like doing like loads of like line work and like preps for like cartwheels, handstands, stuff like that. It just doesn't, wasn't what they all wanted to do. Like some definitely did. Um, but especially the older ones, they just wanted to come, relax, have a little jump around on the trampoline. And as long as you were making sure they were safe and they were having a good time, that's what I realised mattered more. Um, because like I say, this is their summer. They're there for a long time. Make it fun for them. Um, it's the best it'll be the easiest way for them and the easiest way for you um so yeah just kind of like gauging the situation gauging what kind of things they want to do what kind of things they want to learn um like even making a game i used to like make some games that had nothing to do with gymnastics but i was working with a group i had this space to use like just think of something from think things out of the box um but yeah 
Oh, I've missed out a tip. So this one is one of my favourite ones, actually. So I'm glad that I've left this for the last one. Um, and it's kind of like to immerse yourself in your camp's culture. Um, learn like the camp songs. Be familiar like with your camp's rules. Um, like obviously understanding what things are acceptable, what things you can't do at camp. Um, making sure you know that from the start. Um, you don't want to put yourself in any sort of position where things aren't going well and you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing um so yeah make sure you understand what your camp's all about what they like aim to do like every summer at camp my camp has like a different theme um i can't remember what it was my last summer and it was such a good theme if i can remember i'll put it down there somewhere um but yeah there's normally themes for, throughout the summer um things that they want the kids to work towards and like be excited about um and every Friday we'll do something called Starfish, which is when we'll all gather like in front of the lake at the camper theatre as the sun is setting. It's so stunning. Um, and every, like people will get up on stage, they'll tell stories and um, we'll give out like awards. We'll sing camp songs. Um, so, you know, getting involved in that and not being the person that's just sat there, like not really interested. Like, the, like I say, learning the camp songs because some of them are so fun. Um, and just getting involved because if you're sat there not really wanting to take part your kids aren't going to want you either so putting yourself out there learning what your camp's about um, and helping promote that to your kids as well because like I say if you're not interested and you're not really showing that you're willing to like learn more about that kind of thing and put yourself out there and do different things then you, your kids aren't going to want to either so yeah like when we do starfish like each letter of starfish stands for like a different different thing don't really know what the word is so like s is sportsmanship and we have like an integrity award um helpfulness like friendship so each week would be like a different letter of starfish and two i think it's two campers from each division i think um will be like given that award so that's a really nice thing and then obviously like helping them work towards that as well like obviously your head your division leaders and your head counselors of each division will be like watching which kid is being really friendly or being really helpful and by you as a counsellor helping them to do that as well will be massive so yeah making sure you understand what your camp is all about so that you can help your campers understand that as well right i think that is going to be the end of the video here like i said if i can come up with any more ideas i'll add some more tips in or i can just keep making part three part four part five of my tips and tricks video because these are so fun to film and literally after I film everyone like, oh, I should have said that so there's always loads of tips and tricks so I will keep them coming um but yeah thank you very much for watching I hope this has been helpful again um if you have got any questions because I, like I said I had a few people ask me some other questions in like, the comment section of my last tips and tricks video and like my camp America experience video so yeah if you have got any questions please ask away um I love answering all your questions so yeah thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video